Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have played vital roles in shaping our nation and county. From serving in public office, to medical innovation, to shattering barriers and transforming our cultural landscape. During this Asian American and Pacific Islander Month, we celebrate and highlight their achievements. This year's theme is advancing leaders through collaboration in the arts, and we'll introduce you to some Asians making a difference in their communities, specifically those propagating their culture through film, dance, music, and other forms of art. And we'll begin with Chinese ethnic musical traditions, where music is considered a highly calming influence. So... Hailing from a family of musicians, Ru Fu grew up with a burning passion for music and a dream to follow suit. My mom sings every day for hours. Like that's her favorite leisure activity. And I think、um, she, she was a single mom. So she, during her most difficult times, she would go to karaoke. <laughs> and because there was no one else to take care of me, she would take me with her. So I just grew up listening to her singing a lot. And she just sang and sang. I picked things up. Rui specializes in improvisational interpretations of Chinese ethnic musical traditions and modernist portrayals of ancient meditative music. Through her music, she wants to communicate positive messages about China, unity, and diversity. I always feel that I hope people can learn a bit more about each other's culture and the context behind what we're saying before we go into negotiations and before we judge each other. I don't feel that's being done enough in today's world. So I hope that through music, you know, this medium that, that、um, can more easily appeal to others and open up doors through beauty, that can help us find more opportunities to find common ground and to open up more spaces for opportunities for bridging those differences and coming up with different solutions. A successful Chinese dulcimer and improviser, Chao Tian's mission has always been to break down barriers and work across creative genres. If people said music is universal language, I think there must be some accents and dialects in the language system.、Uh, just like me,、um, I came to this country with my Chinese musical dialect, and I use this dialect to tell my story, share my culture with people. Every audience heard my music. Every musician collaborated with me. They have already tasted a little bit about my culture in in some ways. Chao has always been dedicated to preserving the Chinese musical heritage, but performing to a culturally diverse audience in Montgomery County and elsewhere has made her want to create a more universal way to communicate her Chinese musical vocabulary. I'm trying to reshape my dialect. To help people better understand my music language, the main way that I do this reshaping process is through improvising music. Having lived through the Vietnam War as a child. Modan Nguyen depicts life during those years through her paintings. Putting brush to canvas gave her some sort of comfort to ease the misery of a ravaging war. I grew up without a father, so it was very, very difficult in a conservative city. So art was my like outlet, where I I went to to get the comfort, to feel happy. Her passion for painting certainly helped her overcome the most difficult time of her life, but the agonizing memory still lingers to this day. Sometimes I cry because of the difficulties I went through in my childhood when I was in Vietnam. It was always running away from the bullets. Many times I nearly got killed because bullets was flying all over. Looking back, 
sometimes I wish it didn't happen. But then, if it didn't happen, my art would be different now. I would be a different person. And now on to a different form of art, graphic design. Doyle Song never had the intention to join the world of fashion, but his sense of style impressed others. The countless compliments he received prompted his decision to go into retail. I didn't even want to work retail. I would go into stores and people would try to hire me all the time. It was just like my love of clothes. I just really liked a lot of apparel and footwear a whole lot. Doyle would eventually create his own clothing brand that spoke to the life he had led. To show that there isn't always a specific formula to success, and each person has the power to build anything. Enemies Forever is a brand that I created. It's basically, I hate to admit, a name that is probably after my own personality. But Enemies Forever represents being real, letting people know that we don't really have to have what everybody else is doing and we can just be ourselves forever and forever. Although he was born and raised in the U.S., Doyle says his Korean heritage plays a huge role in the person he is today and the kind of graphics he designs. If you look at the brand, we use a lot of the cultural references. If you look at the shirt I'm wearing now, we wrote Enemies Forever in Korean on the shirt. We use a lot of the Asian things that I grew up with to express our art. Documentary filmmaking has long been used to foster social justice. And that's exactly what award-winning documentary filmmaker Yi Chen is doing. I think my background as a Chinese immigrant and also my identity as an Asian American really shape the kind of stories that I want to tell. So I'm interested in telling stories about my own community. I think this film will um raise awareness for audience to know who Asian Americans are. I think for me, that interest comes from the desire to tell stories that are underrepresented in media and also reflect the diversity of the community. Her documentary First Vote looked at how the Asian community was divided by the 2016 election and the importance of voting to increase Asian voter turnout. After seeing how the 2016 election has divided the Asian American voters. I was interested in finding out why Asian American voters, um, for, especially first time voters, you know, why do they vote the way they do? And it's also for me as a first time voter to understand um, more about American democracy, about voting, about civic engagement. First Vote has won the Special Jury Award for Art and Craft of Documentary Form and has screened in several film festivals, including at AFI Silver Theatre. It really is a dream come true to have my film screen at AFI Silver. Asian Americans are the fastest growing population in the country, and 15% of um, Montgomery County uh, residents are Asian Americans. So it's really great to have the film um, screen at AFI Silver um, in Montgomery County to reach you know, Asian American viewers. Have you ever heard of a platform called Twitch? If you haven't, now might be a good time to check it out. Charity Chuan, also known as DJ Accurate, spins on this online platform, joining a growing list of DJs streaming their music live. I know a lot of people are very familiar with mainstream music, mainstream DJs through, um, through the radio and through um, YouTube and everything like that, but there's definitely a big population of music and a population of artists that are not getting exposed and I would one day want to have a big enough community, big enough following where I am in a position to kind of share that music and people can, you know, get a feel for what else is out there besides what the radio is putting out there to them. DJ Accurate primarily spins hip hop, reggae and classics, but any chance he gets to play Cambodian music, he takes it. I was spinning for a fundraiser for the film In the Life of Music. In that fundraiser, I wanted, since it was a Cambodian film, I wanted to incorporate some Cambodian music. So I solicited it for some Cambodian artists, things that my mom used to listen to, things that are current now. So I was able to spend some of that at that fundraiser, which was a very interesting experience. 
As a DJ, like one of the biggest things uh, that I enjoy doing is, you know, getting people together, allowing um, an atmosphere that people can have a good time, listen to good music, share that experience with each other. Oishi Gosh learned to dance before she could walk. A second generation Indian American, she has been immersed in Indian classical dance for close to 13 years. It started from my mother. She always wanted to do dance when she was very young. And so the first time she took me to a dance performance, my eyes immediately lit up. I was so excited. The movements were so exciting to me. I would see them do these beautiful hand gestures and I would think, wow, I, if only I could do that. Oishi, now a high school student at Walt Whitman High School, uses her love for dance to explore her identity as an Indian American and address the misconceptions about her culture. I think when I was younger, I was really quiet about my heritage all because there would be incidents at school where you know, I wouldn't really fit in when I would say, oh, you know, this is what I do at home or this is what I wear sometimes. You know, I didn't, fit, I didn't feel like, you know, I was part of my peers. But as I danced more, I really got more comfortable with who I was as an Indian American. I absolutely love spreading my culture to the people I know. Through my dance and through education, through that, I can teach people, you know, that Indian classical dance is not just dance, it's meditation, it's an art form, it's so much more than that. I dance because it brings me joy. Whenever I feel down, I always look forward to dancing with my teachers, my friends, or just practicing by myself. Oishi is a rising exponent of Odyssey, a thousand-year-old form of Indian classical dance, and Cho, an almost extinct form of Indian folk dance. What I want to do is really spread Cho all around. I want to show people that, you know, it's present, it's here, and I want to show the beauty of it. When I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of representation. I didn't have people on TV that looked like me. I didn't have people dancing that looked like me as much. So to dance in more diverse areas, not just, you know, going to like an Indian event is really um, what I want to aim at because I want to show the young brown girls there that, you know, there's someone there who does, you know, dance and does everything. When we think of Indian music, we often expect to hear the contemporary Bollywood sounds. Nishal Raj, however, offers a different flavor to Indian music with an instrument she met when she was only nine years old. I started playing violin in uh, the after school program when I was in the fifth grade, and it was just sort of um, something my best friend at the time wanted to do, and she thought it'd be fun for us to do it together. When I started playing the violin, I just instantly connected with it, the idea of having a vehicle to express my feelings and also a place to retreat when the world got too crazy and just enjoy that. It was something that really gave me a lot of solace and a space for me to feel safe. To immerse herself in Indian music and culture, following her college graduation, Nishta traveled to India to study the oldest form of Indian classical music, Drukpad. It was also a really beautiful experience for me. It really um, taught me a lot about myself, life, and just being able to be absorbed in that music that I was so desperate to like absorb myself, just being in the root of it all and um, the, the culture and connecting with my own heritage um, was a very special uh, point in my life. Nishta is also known for her skills in blending Western and Eastern music with a mix of beatbox, jazz, and rock which isn't something we are used to hearing in Indian classical music. Her ability to mix Eastern classical music with modern sounds would serve her well when she joined the Strathmore Artist in Residence program in 2013. Part of the program is to collaborate with your co-artists in residence, so that was a very great experience because my music, for me, you know, I write and compose music, music that's rooted in Indian classical, but really I feel uh, most connected to when I'm uh, creating music that brings in 
different genres and collaboration with other artists. So that experience at Strathmore was sort of another opportunity for me to really explore those intersections and, you know, that part of my music as well. Through collaboration in the arts, these individuals are leading the way in helping shape the future of their communities.